Here's your wrestling news for December 11th, 2020. And your headlines for today include, WWE adds another match to TLC pay-per-view. WWE planned a huge match for Brock Lesnar. Tiny Lister, WWF's Zeus Friday's Debo, passes away at 62. Big E vs. Sami Zayn, contract signing, and more announced for WWE SmackDown this week. MJF's ex-girlfriend calls him out on social media. Why Pac disappeared from AEW Dynamite. Impact Wrestling claims to have beat WWE NXT in viewership this week. Vince McMahon buried Dolph Ziggler to rib on WWE Hall of Famer. Very interesting dream match proposed for AEW and Impact Wrestling partnership. WWE upset about Snoop Dogg appearing for AEW, already facing consequences. How often Sting will appear on AEW Dynamite. What is Ronda Rousey doing these days? And more. We are kicking off today by looking ahead to WrestleMania 37 as it was recently reported that the biggest show of 2021 is taking shape, but that may not be the case. According to WrestleVotes, several big matches were considered for the show, including Roman Reigns vs. Goldberg, a match that both men recently teased on social media, and one that was booked for WrestleMania 36 before the Tribal Chief took his hiatus. The same report also indicated that Edge vs. Randy Orton is still the plan, and though he's not even with WWE right now, the company is planning for Brock Lesnar to return on the road to WrestleMania to set up a WrestleMania triple threat match between The Beast, Drew McIntyre, and Keith Lee. However, it now looks like these matches may not be in the works after all, as Ringside News are saying they've contacted officials in WWE about the rumored matches only to receive several hell no's and are noting that these matches haven't even been pitched or brought up in meetings. Whatever the truth may be, WWE has a long way to go before WrestleMania 37, and with earlier reports that the company hasn't locked down any matches or winners for next month's Royal Rumble, the company has a lot of work to do between now and March next year. We are looking ahead to TLC next as the final pay-per-view of 2020 has another match confirmed. It's been confirmed that Raw Tag Team Champions The New Day will put their titles on the line against the Hurt Business's Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, but no stipulation has been given for the match. This news comes after reports that Big E is expected to be challenging Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn at the show, which could be confirmed on tonight's SmackDown. The Hurt Business have secured some wins over The New Day in recent weeks, and we'll have to wait and see whether they can do that again with the titles on the line next Sunday. We've got some sad news to report next as Tiny Lister, known as Zeus in WWE, has died at the age of 62. TMZ reported that law enforcement was called to his Marina Del Rey apartment just before 3 p.m. yesterday, and currently, no cause of death has been revealed. In wrestling, Zeus starred alongside Hulk Hogan in 1989's No Holds Barred movie before joining the WWF for a handful of matches between August and December that year. Later joining WCW as Z Gangsta, part of the alliance to end Hulkamania, Zeus would compete in the much maligned Doomsday Cage match at Uncensored 1996, which saw Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage defeat a total of eight opponents. Lister had a prominent career in films also, as he had an important role in the 2008 Batman movie The Dark Knight, and also appeared in The Fifth Element, Jackie Brown, and dozens of other films. Also appearing in music videos for the likes of Michael Jackson and 50 Cent, Lister truly had a wide career in entertainment, and we extend our condolences to his family and friends at this sad time. Over to SmackDown next as some big plans and matches have been made for tonight's show. On WWE.com, it's been confirmed that Big E will face Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn, whilst Dolph Ziggler will take on one half of the SmackDown Tag Champions Montez Ford. Carmella and SmackDown Women's Champion Sasha Banks will also sign the contract to make their title match official at WWE TLC, and we'll have to see how this show goes on the road to the final pay-per-view of 2020. Over to AEW Next and MJF is pretty ruthless on Twitter, even dissing a crying child and telling a talented artist to cut off their hands, but he probably didn't expect a recent Twitter exchange with an ex-girlfriend. When one fan tweeted a drawing of MJF as a James Bond villain holding a cat, MJF shot back saying, I hate cats, prompting Alley Cat, who he used to date, saying, yeah, we know. The two broke up in June 2019, and Alley Cat has claimed that she moved into a new state with no family and friends for MJF, only to be given the cliche line from MJF, I just can't be in a relationship right now. 
Temporarily left homeless with no money in a strange city, it's clear that Alley Cat isn't ready to forgive the Inner Circle member, and this is one Twitter spat MJF would rather forget. Speaking of AEW, Pac returned to Dynamite after months away, but after a couple of weeks, the former WWE Cruiserweight Champion has disappeared yet again. It turns out that Pac has gone back to the UK for the holidays, which was first reported by Bodyslam.net, and that's why we haven't seen him on Dynamite recently, after realigning with Penta and Phoenix. The rumored plan is for the reunited Death Triangle to feud with Eddie Kingston, Butcher, and Blade, though Penta's recent leg injury could throw a wrench into those plans. Pac will be back on Dynamite after the holidays are over, so it seems 2021 will be a big year for him if things go to plan. Traveling from the UK is a very complicated situation right now, but AEW still has plans for him. And with the first UK citizens being given the vaccine, hopefully it won't be too long before things go back to normal. One team that are watching AEW closely are Impact Wrestling, and thanks to their new alliance, Scott Demore has made some pretty bold claims this week against WWE. In a press release, Impact is claiming that this week's episode topped 750,000 viewers, though you only get that number if you look at the live viewership, the viewers from replays, as well as views from Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. With this figure, Demore is claiming that Impact beat NXT in the ratings, as the gold brand achieved 659,000 viewers, though only counts fans who watched live and not those who watched repeats or social media. Demore added, it's hard to compare apples and oranges, and some digital media provide better watch data than others, but we feel confident over 750,000 US-based fans watched the episode in the first 24 hours, and 1 million fans have clicked on the various highlights we put out on social media. If you compare just the viewership figures, Impact did 221,000 to NXT's 659,000, though that clearly hasn't stopped AEW's partner from making some big claims about their most watched show of the year. Now, Owen Hart's death in 1999 is nothing short of one of the darkest days in wrestling, and since then, his widow Martha has kept her distance from WWE. That's why The Rocket hasn't had an action figure in over 20 years, but this week, that changed, as Pro Wrestling Tees signed a deal with the Owen Hart Foundation to release merchandise, which includes a very limited edition micro brawler. The first Owen figure in decades, it's hardly surprising it sold out in minutes, and Matt Cardona tweeted out that he got goosebumps being able to order an Owen figure after over 20 years. Only 250 of the $30 figures have been made, and some are appearing on eBay for inflated prices, and given the demand that's clearly there, this may not be the last Owen figure to be released. Back to WWE and Dolph Ziggler is often touted as one of the hardest workers in WWE, but that doesn't mean WWE know how to book him or treat him backstage. During Talk is Jericho, Chris Jericho spoke with Dave Meltzer and said that Pat Patterson was a big fan of Dolph and encouraged Vince McMahon to give Ziggler a push, which ended up backfiring for the show-off. Jericho explained that Vince got so sick of Patterson's pleas that he'd deliberately bury Ziggler just to rib the Hall of Famer, and Y2J pointed out that Vince thought this would be funny, even though it was detrimental to WWE to bury a talent to play a prank that none of the fans were in on. A two-time former world champion, it's been nearly eight years since Ziggler last held the world heavyweight title, and at this stage, even his most loyal fans have given up on him reaching the heights he was once at. More from AEW and Impact's partnership next, as Impact's Tommy Dreamer has had some ideas for a potential dream match. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Dreamer spoke about a true Monday Night Wars match, which would see the face of WCW, Sting, the first ever WWF Undisputed Champion Chris Jericho, and the heart and soul of ECW Tommy Dreamer face off in a triple threat match. This would certainly be a match that would draw fans in, as we've already seen what AEW does for Impact's viewership, and there's endless dream matches that are now a possibility thanks to this monumental alliance. Back to WWE now, as fans haven't seen Maurice since she and The Miz announced that she was pregnant with her second child, but she could be back soon. When one fan tweeted that they missed Maurice in the ring, adding that the women's division needs her, the former Divas champion said she has one more run in her. As a reality TV star and mother of two, Maurice is clearly a busy woman, but don't count out a return to the ring when the time is right. More from AEW as the company announced three special holiday episodes of Dynamite this week, and one special guest for the second night of their New Year's Smash event didn't make WWE happy. 
On January 6th, AEW will host night two of their New Year's Smash, which will include an appearance from Snoop Dogg, much to the ire of WWE. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Brian Alvarez noted that there are people in WWE who aren't happy at all about AEW using Snoop, who will also work as a judge on TNT's Go Big Show alongside Cody Rhodes. The news of Snoop going to AEW was quickly followed up by WWE pulling all of Snoop's crossover merch with The Undertaker from WWEShop.com. And now if you search for Snoop Dogg on the site, it asks if you meant Dong, which no, we didn't. While several fans saw pulling the Snoop merch as retaliation from WWE, that isn't the case, as it's now being reported that the line was only available until December 6th, and whilst this happening alongside the Snoop AEW story is bad timing, it wasn't related. Even so, WWE aren't happy with Snoop going to AEW as part of their New Year's special, and who knows when, or if, we'll see the rap legend back on WWE programming after this. Another person fans can expect at the New Year's special is Sting, and whilst there's reportedly a plan for him to wrestle again, that may have never happened over a decade ago. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer spoke about Sting's run in TNA Wrestling, which was meant to be a short-term deal, but that clearly didn't happen. He said, When he first signed with TNA in 2005, whatever it was, that was a one-year contract, and that was going to be the last year. Then every year at the end of the contract, Dixie Carter would beg him one more year and he'd go, okay, one last year. As for plans for Sting to appear in AEW, Meltzer noted that he's going to be a regular, especially given that he was Cody's favorite wrestler as a kid, and with the icon signing a multi-year deal with AEW, fans can expect to see far more of the Stinger than his time in WWE. Ronda Rousey news next as the former Raw Women's Champion has returned to TV, just not WWE. During the Disney Investor Day program, it was revealed that Rousey will host an MMA expansion of the already existing show Peyton's Places on ESPN+. Hosted by Peyton Manning, the show already has a baseball section covered by David Ortiz, Abby Wambach for soccer, and Eli Manning for football. And we'll have to see how Rousey gets on in her new role next year. And we're ending today with Jackson Riker as he recently addressed what the future holds for him in WWE. After receiving a tryout as Elias' new partner on WWE Main Event, Riker took to Twitter to say, I will walk with, clearly alluding to Elias' catchphrase, and cleared things up on Instagram saying, What's in store for the Savage? I have a lot more to give, a lot more to earn, I'm not done. Riker got into a ton of hot water when some social media posts, both past and present, were uncovered, which ultimately caused the end of the Forgotten Sons. But Riker is clearly not ready to finish with WWE just yet.